So hopefully you got it factored to here and then maybe this is where you're getting stuck. So as you notice, they both have an X minus two. So ask yourself, what's the other one missing? So this one on the left needs a two and this one on the right needs an X. And when I do that, then my common denominator is gonna be two times X times X minus two. Because remember, they already have an X minus two. One has a two, one has an X. So I just need to make sure that everything has the same. So I'm going to multiply this one on the left by two on the numerator and the denominator. And the one on the right is going to be multiplied by X in the numerator and the denominator. And remember that in the numerator, it's going to the whole thing. So as I expand all of that out, my first numerator, I get 2X plus 4 because I'm distributing that 2 all over 2X times X minus 2. Minus x squared plus 2x, because now I'm distributing an x, all over 2x times x minus 2. And now I have that common denominator. So state your restrictions. x can't be 2 or positive 2. x can't be 0 or positive 2. If 2x equals 0, then x can't be 0, and the minus 2 means positive 2. So I've stated my restrictions, now I can add or subtract. So when you're subtracting, you have to remember that you're subtracting both parts. So it's 2x plus 4 minus x squared minus 2x. So you end up with negative x squared. The 2x minus 2x cancels out, and then I have 4. All over 2x times x minus 2. Now hopefully when you see this numerator you realize that they're both perfect squares but usually we don't have a negative x squared plus 4. Usually you would see x squared minus 4. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as negative 1 if you want to take it out and you can say x squared minus 4. Or I'm actually just going to rewrite it as 4 minus x squared all over 2x times x minus 2. And remember, we need to check to see if anything else is going to cancel. So once you see this, hopefully you're catching difference of squares. So if I leave it backwards, it's going to factor to 2 plus x times 2 minus x. Now my x and my constant are just switching all over 2x times x minus 2. And hopefully this is ringing something in your head. Remember, a minus b over b minus a simplifies to negative 1. So if I had taken that negative 1 out, I would have just been left with it. But in this case, when I see that, that's going to cancel out to negative 1. So something does cancel out. So in my numerator, I have negative 1 times 2 plus x all over 2x. And there's several different ways that I could write this answer. I could say negative 1 times x plus 2 over 2x. I could distribute that negative 1 and say negative x minus 2 over 2x. Any of those answers would be correct, as long as you remember to cancel that piece out. So taking a look at the next one, have a little bit more to factor, nothing there. But over here, I can take out a 2. I'm left with x squared minus 3x plus 2. So what sums to negative 3 and multiplies to give you 2? Both have to be negative, so negative 2 and negative 1. So I'm going to factor that down even more. So now I have 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. This only has an x minus 2, which means I'm going to have to multiply by 2 and x minus 1. And 2 times x minus 1, I can even write as 2x minus 2. So that's what has to go to that numerator. But remember, in the denominator, we keep it in that factored form, so times 2 times x minus 1. So now I'm going to go through and try to start simplifying. So my denominator is 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1 for both of them. The numerator is not changing in the second fraction because we're not changing that denominator. 
But over here, I need to distribute all of this out. So I have 4x plus 12 times 2x minus 2. A binomial times a binomial. So I should end up with a trinomial, three terms. So as I'm just distributing, 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times negative 2 is negative 8x. 12 times 2x, 24x. And 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. And then seeing what simplifies, I end up with 8x squared plus 16x minus 24. And remember, I don't worry about factoring the numerators until the very, very end. So state our restrictions. We factor, we found the least common denominator. State your restrictions. X can't be 1 or 2. And now I'm going to go through and actually add the numerator and see if there's anything that will simplify. So I get 8x squared. 16 plus 6 is going to be 22x, and 24 minus 7 is going to be minus 31. All over, 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. So I need to see if this factors, and I have some kind of crazy big numbers, and that's okay. So sum to 22 in my product is 8 times 31, which is... 248. And remember, I really need to see if I can take out a 2 and a 1. If I can't take out a 2 and a 1, then nothing's going to cancel out. And so that doesn't help me out. So 248 and 2 would be 124 and 2. That doesn't work. Um, 248 and 1 would be 248 and 1, just like that. So that doesn't work. Um, so I can kind of keep playing around with this. But overall, I know nothing's going to cancel out because of this. The x minus 2, x minus 1, neither one of those options factored. So this is it. In this case, I stated my restrictions. There was nothing to factor to see if it canceled out. That's it. So complex fractions are actually not complex at all. As I see I have 1 over x plus x over y, and this big bar you just have to remember means dividing. So um, let's say that you had 1 7 divided by 2 thirds. Back to that again. That's the same thing as writing it like this. 1 7 divided by 2 thirds, which you know is just 1 7 times 3 over 2, which will just be 3 over 14. But if I had this instead... If I had 1 7 plus 2 6, or 2 fifths, before I can multiply by 3 over 2, because remember that's the same thing as dividing by 2 thirds, I need to turn this into one fraction, which means I need a common denominator. So 5 times 7 is 35, so I'd multiply that by 5 and 5, and multiply that by 7 and 7. So I would get 5 over 35 plus 14 over 35 which is 19 over 35, and that's the fraction that I need. So with complex fractions, that's all that you're doing, is you need to turn the top into one fraction, the bottom into one fraction, and then just do your keep, change, flip, and go from there. So piece by piece, taking a look at the numerator, if I have 1 over x plus x over y, my common denominator would just be xy. So I'm going to multiply this by y and y, and multiply the second one by x and x. So I end up with y over xy plus x squared over xy. So I'm going to rewrite that whole numerator as x squared plus y all over xy. And then I need to take a look at the denominator. So I have 1 over y plus 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So when I multiply by y, because that's what I need, I end up with y over y. It's just like saying, what's 3 fourths plus 1? Well, 1 is 4 over 4, so that's 7 fourths. That's it. So 1 plus y is y plus 1, or 1 plus y, all over y. And now that I've written it as two fractions, then I can go through and do keep, change, flip. So my first fraction is x squared plus y all over xy divided by y plus 1 over y. Keep, change, flip says I'm going to take that and make it multiplication and flip it around. So I have y in the numerator and y plus 1 in the denominator. 
And remember, whenever you're multiplying and dividing, you don't need common denominators. You only need common denominators when adding or subtracting. So once you're here, you just multiply across. That's it. And you could check to see if anything cancels out. So a Y on the top and a Y on the bottom would cancel out. And then that's it. So my numerator is going to be X squared plus Y because the second Y canceled out. All over X times Y plus 1. And that's it. Restrictions, I could say X can't be 0 and Y can't be negative 1. But going through these problems, this is a lot faster than you think. So complex is really not that complex. So taking a look at this one, I have one fraction on the top. I have one fraction on the bottom. So I can just go ahead and jump in with my keep, change, flip. So keep the first one, 3 over X squared minus 1. times flipping it so x minus 1 over 2 and that factoring rule still applies so x squared minus 1 would factor to x plus 1 times x minus 1 so if I want to state my restrictions now x can't be plus or minus 1 that would cancel that would cancel the 3 and the 2 don't cancel and so I'm left with 3 over 2 times x plus 1 so remember, adding and subtracting, you have to go through those steps. You have to find that LCM, that LCD, least common denominator. Complex fractions, once you just have a fraction on the top and a fraction on the bottom, remember you don't need a common denominator when you're multiplying or dividing. And that's it. As long as you're following those steps, good to go.